What makes a good horror story? Is it the dread as a heroine opens the door of an old haunted house? Is it the excitement of battling creatures that only come out in the dead of night? Or is it the darkness itself that lingers long after the story ends? Come with me. Let's wade into the water and see if something will wrap a slimy hand around our ankles. Welcome to Shake, Rattle, and Record. Shake, Rattle, and Roll is a horror film franchise that I grew up with, something that was constantly replayed on local television around All Saints Day or Undas when it's said that the veil between the living and the dead is thinnest. There's always been something celebratory about Undas. The cemeteries come alive with people, food, and music, singing, of course, it's hardly a Filipino event without karaoke. And the ghost stories. They would trickle in at first, a strange story in the evening news of an aswang sighting or a possession at a school, always around October. Then the variety shows would get into their Halloween programming, interviews with celebrities who've had unexplained experiences or espiritistas with their tales of exorcisms or famous haunted places. The Manila Film Center and the Diplomat Hotel in Baguio come to mind. Then the horror film marathons that would last until the weekend, this is how I came to know and love among other 80s and 90s films, the Shake, Rattle, and Roll series, which is in fact the longest-running local film franchise. The first installment was released under the now-defunct Athena Productions in 1984. The succeeding installments from 1990 to 2014 were produced by Regal Entertainment. Each movie is an anthology of three stories that have been directed by some of the most prominent Filipino directors, like Ishmael Bernal of Himala, Peke Galiaga of Oro Plata Mata, and Gerald Tarog of General Luna. And the stars, of course, Manilin Reynes, Janice de Belen, Chris Aquino, Joel Torre, Herbert Bautista, Gina Alahar, Rosemary Hill, Ronnie Lazaro, Camille Prats, Ay Segera, Lilia Contapay, all of the names a 90s baby grows up with. So I thought it would be fitting to begin this horror fan podcast with Shake, Rattle, and Roll. This is not in any way affiliated with the franchise, in case you're wondering. I also don't intend to do this in order or have any kind of theme, really. It will be whatever I'm in the mood for, very unlike her story, Southeast Asia. If you're interested in women's history in the region, check out that podcast, too. Season 1 just wrapped up with an episode on the Babaylan in pre-colonial Philippines. But tonight, I'm in the mood for a creature feature. And some classic Manila Reynes. So let's talk about Shake, Rattle, and Roll... Nanay. Nanay, our mother, tells the story of Maloy, played by Manalyn Reynes, a college student constantly bullied by her classmates. During the opening scene, they are doing fieldwork for some sort of zoology class at the lake within a volcano, think Taal and Batangas. This scene is a way to contrast the classmates in bikinis and trunks while Maloy is in an oversized collared shirt and khaki shorts with her thick glasses on. Two male classmates play a prank on her. They stick a sign on her back that reads, Kabiyak ng shokoy, wife of a merman. In Philippine mythology, a shokoy is usually a humanoid with scaly green skin, webbed hands and feet, and fins on different parts of the body. It seemed like they chose this insult because she was really into zoology, but it's also a bit of foreshadowing. Shortly after, her best friend Sally, played by Candy Pangilinan, comes up to her with specimens, large, gel-like eggs with tentacles attached to them. Sally squeezes one and they hear a strange, anguished noise. Malloy tells her not to hurt the eggs. Then she secures them in a bag, logs them in her clipboard, and puts the eggs in a cooler. 
Sally goes back into the water for a swim and is immediately dragged down by an unseen force. They manage to get her out, but she's already drowned. Maloy finds seaweeds and tentacles all over her body and finds even more of it on the cooler. She makes it back to her dorm with the cooler in tow. I guess there wasn't enough time to take everything back because of the accident? But Maloy is accosted by Desi Ray, played by Ai de las Alas, and a dozen of other girls who make fun of her stutter. It's very annoying. Then, her excruciatingly loud landlady comes along and yells at her to clean the water leaking from the cooler. They go into the kitchen, where Maloy explains where she's been. The landlady, Ebang, played by Vanji Labalan, tells her that lakes are extremely dangerous. They're mariit, places that have a dark power because of the monstrous entities that live in them. Ebang calls it a dormitory of the Aswang. Bakit? Saan ka ba galing? Field trip po. Sa isang lake. Lake? Lawa. Lawa? Hindi mo ba alam na mapanganib ang mga lawa? Bakit ho? Dahil karamihan ng mga lawa ay mariit. Ho? Huh? Mariit! Palibhasa, science ka lang ng science eh. Ibig sabihin ng mariit, isang lugar na may masamang kapangyarihan. Dahil marami ritong nakatirang mga lamang lupa. Parang... Parang... Dormitoryo ng mga halimaw. Now this is a little simplistic. Mariit is a Hiligaynon word that refers to an indigenous belief in Western Visayas with obvious roots in animism. It is the belief that every facet of nature is inhabited by the taglugar, tagalugar, which literally means of the place. They are spirit dwellers who guard everything from trees to hills to bodies of water. So it's not necessarily a dark power. It is a protective power that can retaliate when what is being guarded is slighted or destroyed. So this means that extra care must be taken when a place is mariit, such as asking permission to pass by calling out, Tabi Tabi Po. The song we play at the beginning is actually called Mariit by the Ilongo singer and comedian Jepoy Palanca. I'll link his page in the description box. I've read that the old Hiligaynon incantation is Tabi Tabi Anay Mga Amigo Basi Masalapay Kamo Hindi Ako Makakita Sa Inyo Step aside, my friends. I might accidentally hit you because I can't see you. Most of us have been taught this as children. Even I, born and raised in Manila, know to say Tabi Tabi Po whenever walking in wooded areas. But it's not just forests and lakes that are mariit, of course. With human development, many highways are known as mariit, accident-prone. Not by any fault of vehicular or road engineering, but because of the taglugar who do not always appreciate our intrusions. Back to the story. Eban continues that there are spirits and monsters in lakes, specifically the undin. Now, the undin, or ondin, comes from the writings of the Swiss physician, alchemist, and philosopher of the German Renaissance, Paracelsus. It derives from the Latin word onda, meaning wave, and first appears in Paracelsus's A Book on Nymphs, Sylphs, Pygmies, and Salamanders, and On the Other Spirits, published in 1566. An undine is essentially a water nymph, usually female, as water is a feminine element in the Greek tradition. This water nymph has appeared in many different works like Friedrich de la Motte Fouquet's novel Undine in 1811, Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid in 1837, Aloysius Bertrand's poetry collection Gaspard de la Nuit in 1842, Jean Giraudot's play Undine in 1939, Seamus Haney's poem Told from the Undine's Perspective in 1969, the DC Comics The Super Friends issue number 14 in 1978, where there is a character named Undine, and of course, Shake, Rattle, and Roll 3's Undine in 1991. Now, the Undine, traditionally, is a water nymph who becomes human when she falls in love with a man but is doomed to die if he is unfaithful to her. In Anderson's The Little Mermaid, the prince is indeed unfaithful to her and because she couldn't bring herself to kill him, she dies and dissolves into sea foam. The Disney version ends a little more happily, of course. 
The shape rather than roll version, the Undin, as Ebang explains, is a true monster that lives beneath the water. A hybrid of cockroach, monitor lizard, and fish with a voice of weeping demons. Whoever disturbs their home or takes their eggs is guaranteed a swift death. So obviously this deviates from the original Undine myth. Directors Peque Gallaga and Lore Reyes merged the idea of the water nymph with the indigenous belief of the Mariit to produce one of the most iconic monsters in Philippine cinema. The truth, they say, is out there. Trouble is, the truth sometimes can be bland and uninteresting. Subscribe to Dark Theory. Dark Theory is a self-produced Philippine podcast that takes you down a rabbit hole of mystery, conspiracy, and dark twisted tales that blur the boundaries of what you know to be real. Subscribe to A Little Darkness. Listen to Dark Theory, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Anchor. We make the truth a tad bit more delightful, all with a pinch of darkness. This is Dark Fury. Some noise leads Ebang out of the kitchen, upon which the Undine reveals herself hiding in a water jug. It looks more like a frog with its green skin, lanky limbs, and bulging eyes. Her face is covered in sludge, and what hair she has is plastered to her misshapen head. That's the creature you see in the cover photo, the, the unique invention of this movie and the titular nanai or mother. She makes eye contact with Maloy and flies at her in an attempt to rip her face off. She manages to fight the Undine, which then retreats. Maloy finds the eggs in the cooler and attempts to return it to the Undine. But the entire dorm walks into the kitchen and makes fun of her again for crawling around on the floor and calling to the creature. At this point, they haven't seen the Undine, so they're still assuming she's just a little kooky. I just want to commend Ayaidala's alas at this point because she is truly, extremely irritating as Desiree. And if I were Maloy, I would have already lost it. Baka... Ikaw ang gusto niya. Type ka ng mga halimaw. <laughs> gusto? Kabiyak ng shokol! See what I mean? Ridiculous! Anyway, Desi Ray's boyfriend shows up with a bunch of other guys, including Joey Marquez, for presumably a dorm party. Joey Marquez's script seems to consist mostly of... Shit, you're kidding, ah, wow. Maloy goes to take a bath to escape the chaos, and we are treated to some karaoke while she cleans a jar to put the eggs in. Oh, my love, my darling. I'm hungered for your touch A long, lonely time Yeah. The Undin is actually in the bathroom with her, hiding in a toilet bowl, and she nearly flushes her down. Her landlady, though, unluckily walks into the bathroom and the Undine gets her, melting her down in seconds with some type of venom spewing from her mouth, bringing the total deaths in this episode to two so far. Maloy, already in distress, finds Joey Marquez, he doesn't have a name here really, in the bathroom, presumably trying to peep on her. She attacks him with a mop, which, good for her. Joey Marquez hides in a stall, snickering to himself, Sexual harassment is very funny, apparently. The Undine gets him, though, and Maloy watches as his entire body dissolves, bones and all, the liquid seeping into the drain. Maloy takes this in stride. I'm not sure I would react as calmly if I saw this, but she offers the eggs to the Undine again. But as luck would have it, the entire dorm walks into the bathroom. Maloy tries to explain what happened, but nobody believes her. 
Desiree takes the eggs and crushes them with her feet. The Undine screams. They bully Malloy a little more and she finally, finally punches Desiree and pushes her head first into a toilet. Nobody helps Desiree for some reason, but they do carry her out of the bathroom. She then dramatically moans under a colombo, but at this point, she runs into the inevitable. The Undine attacks and liquefies at least five people in the room. Desiree is just a head in a ribcage the last time we see her. Malloy finds and offers the Undine one last egg to stop the rampage. The Undine takes the egg while the surviving doormates look on. She asks the Undine to get back into the water jug. After a bit of apology, Malloy takes the Undine back to the lake where she reunites with her lover who was waiting for her in a tangle of reeds. Now, we have no idea how anybody would explain that many disappearances to the police without sounding like they were all hallucinating. And at a college party, there can only be a few conclusions there. But what I like about this story is probably what most people like about it too. A shy underdog character who eventually fights for herself but doesn't lose her compassion. She doesn't blame the Undine for the course of action it takes, largely because she understands that it was them who disturbed the natural order in the first place. And because, as the titular mother, the Undine had the duty to rescue the eggs no matter what it takes. Malloy shows respect for nature and the supernatural that sets her apart from her far less discriminating classmates. Manon and Reynes does a phenomenal job playing Malloy, and she stars in a total of five stories in this series. There's a pretty good chance we'll cover all of them. Nana is a good example of what makes Shake, Rattle, and Roll special. It is rooted in Filipino beliefs, has a memorable heroine and an iconic villain, and manages to combine a bunch of different elements into screaming good fun. And like any good horror story, it leaves you with a warning. If you happen to wander into a place that is Mariit, take heed, show respect. You never know what you might bring home if you don't. That's it for the first episode of Shake, Rattle, and Record. Check back in next time as we delve into Tulay, directed by Frank G. Rivera and starring Ay Segera, Aramina, Matet de Leon, and Tom Toss Jr. Thanks again to Jepoy Palanca for letting us play his song, Mariit. Follow him on Facebook and YouTube. The links are in the description box. This is your host, the disembodied voice coming from inside your closet. Thank you for listening and don't forget to follow Shake, Rattle, and Record on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at SRR Podcast. I'm Agus Ramirez. Scare you next time.